Hey, thanks for tuning in. Remember to drop by uh, the PrepRex store. I'll throw a link down below and go get you some prep, sell some PrepRex swag. So, the premise of this is I did a simple um, get me home bag the other day. And now we're going to take and do a more advanced model. So I'm going to park my little butt in the chair here and uh, we'll get to it. See you in a sec. All right, so like I said, we did a simple, budget-friendly, get-me-home bag. Now we're going to go over one that's a little more advanced as far as the items in it. Um, I did cut out one item. That was a AM FM weather band radio. Um, we'll assume that I've still got my Bofang with it. It's back in its protect bag. So I guess after I take a drink of the hard stuff here, We'll dive into it. First thing on the outside is a much better flashlight. And uh, it's nice and bright. It's adjustable. So I can go as wide or as narrow as I need. Also on the outside on this D-lock ring is a solar powered flashlight. So I've got an option for daylight and nighttime. Excuse me. Next on the outside is my bushcraft knife. I, and this this would be the kit I would have at my office if I was working, which is why it's got some. Oops, losing my clip here. Anyway, I'll fix that later. But this would be the knife I would have with me. It was it's the Battle Horse Knives Full Stand Edition. Uh, razor sharp do a lot of things that a standard knife won't like cut down branches small trees to make lean to or other things the blade is shaped in such a way that I can actually hang on to the tip of it and scrape with it if I need to um, it's a good all-around knife and it's heavy excuse me next we'll go over here And uh, I'll try and mute that out. I've got the little bungee cord here to help just make sure this stays in place. It's about the only purpose it serves. On the top here, I have a little uh, cell nylon tarp. It's a little one. It's a 3x3 three three or 4x4. Four four, I don't remember which now. I have to open it back up and I don't really want to do it here. <laughs> um, it's a Gamli. I think that's how you pronounce it, G-A-M-L-Y, or L-I. That's a nice, good way to afford a simple, you know, over-the-head rain shelter if needed. And here, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get out. Da, 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 da. Don't worry, I'm not going to give up my day job. I ain't going to start singing. Little other one of my canteen kits. Um, at the bottom here, I have four of these little wire loops that I can use to attach things on the outside as I find them if I need to, or to help make shelter, you know, so I can run a rope or cordage and, you know, make different tie-off points to it. I have other stuff to help with that as well. <coughs> Inside here is my boo-boo kit, a cap light because I almost always have a ball cap with me. This has got red. Come on, there we go, white. So it's, that way I can use this at nighttime and not affect my vision by using a red light. I also have an assortment of different types of drink mixes, just in case I get thirsty and find some potable water, or I can boil it in this. Yes, I like this little setup. Pull your little lip up, lock it into place, that'll hold it. And you got the stand. And the lid. Uh, I like this. I went camping a while back 
and uh, with some other people. And it worked out great. I mean, I set it next to the fire, warm up my water, make me some coffee in the first thing in the morning. So that was a pretty nice little setup. <coughs> and yes, that is the Pathfinder series. That takes care of this little thing. This old army bag was given to me. Um, it's fur lined and I actually want to try and get a different bag. Um, a more modern bag. This is an old World War II or Vietnam or some era. It's old. I want to get something a little more modern that has a few more pockets to it. So let's dive into this. First we'll go into this little pocket. After I release it. Again I have the straw, the filters, and up here on the top the water bag for an extra way to carry water and drink it from. I still have my fishing kit and my odds and ends kit which has got water purification tablets, it's got that little mini pry bar, uh, fingernail clippers, thread, needle, and safety pin. And I do believe that's it for that pocket. So instead of fighting it like I did last time, I'm actually going to put this up top <coughs> excuse me, to uh, make it a little easier. In this pocket, change things up. I have 10 of these. Make sure I get them all out. And I have the, these are little clips, they're friction clip. You can put that out of tarp. And I'll try and zoom in on it, get this down here. But you clip it to a tarp. I'll just do it this way. Put a rope in there. And you clamp it down, and it's locked into place. Now the way I have these is set up kind of like a pressic knot, where I can wrap it around. And then run it through. I get one that's not hooked up. This one's a little short, but here's one. I can wrap it around the rope, run it through. This way, I have a you know, like a pressic knot that'll help hold it in place and give it nice intention, as well as allow me to clip a tarp or some sort of shelter should I need it. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, it's extremely warm in here. Both my neighbors have their heat cranked and my apartment just turns into a sauna. Um, I have from Titan Survival one of the emergency blankets. This is thicker than a standard Mylar and it folds up much neater. I'm not taking it out of the package because I will not be able to re-fold re it. Camo, it just happens to be the one I have. Um, they have other colors. I also still have the rain poncho. Because if it's raining, you don't want to get wet. Still have a notepad. Ink pen. Still have two calium lights. <clears throat> and I still have my little stove. And I changed the stove up just a little bit. I have in here a fire rod, matches, needle, and thread. I have some of those uh, tinder wicks or whatever they're called. Turn it this way. I'll try to zoom in right here. And I also have some small esbit tabs. So multiple ways to start a fire, keep it going. Of course, I have that. You know, standard cotton balls. Get these back in here. And I also stuck my little wire saw in here as well for storage. Makes it a little more compact. Less things running around and, gee, this is dirty. You'd think I'd used it. And, last but not least, the little fire starter. That takes care of those two. <coughs> now I'm going to have to turn this a little bit so I can get stuff in and out of it better. <coughs> this is where a few other things have changed drastically. For me, I have a schmog. Or, excuse me, balaclava. I'm sorry, balaclava. Hey, give me a break. It's late. I had to wait till the kid went to bed. I also have some eye protection. Um, these have foam pad around them. Uh, they're nice. They'll conform right to my head. And, uh, with the foam padding on it, they fit nice. They take and block out any sand and debris. It's a pretty nice little set. I have a Sawyer mini water filter. I 
I have a Trichology self-inflating um, sleeping pad. This is kind of a luxury item. You don't have to have it. I just like it. Um, I'm old. I need something soft to sleep on. Give me a break. Come on. The top part, I got my gloves still. And of course, I still have my beef jerky. Still have some cordage. Still have my cutting board. Still have my little knife that I can turn into a neck knife if I need to. And a solar charger. And of course, I would have, excuse me, an appropriate cord for my phone. <coughs> excuse me. So, as you can see, there's a little bit more here. Kind of open it up a little bit so you can see better. The idea of a get me home kit obviously is to get you home no matter where you're at. Um, obviously, a way to make and you know make potable water is important. A way to if your trek is more than going to be more than three or four days, obviously a little bit of food isn't going to do it. And if you're near a stream, then being able to fish is important. You know, you take and grab the little wire saw or the my bushcraft knife and I cut down a nice little branch and I can make me a fishing rod. Um, I have a way to make shelter if I need to between you know the uh, prussic clips and these other three items I can make me a shelter. I have a way to stay warm if the nights get cool, something to sleep on that won't damage this if I lay on it. You know, if I can put that down lay on this I'm good. You know, I guess what I'm trying to say is when you're building a bag for an office, think about where you're at. Think about the worst possible case scenario. Um, depending on how far you are from your home, if you use public transportation from point A, or you get from home to point A using your vehicle, then use public transit from point B, or however, point A to B, and B to C, which is your office you're not going to be able to rely on that public transportation to get you back to your vehicle. So you have to plan on having to hike that route. Do you know the route you're going to take? Have you figured out the possible hazards along that route? Are you going to have to cross a body of rip water? Do you have, do you know where the bridges are that you got to cross? Cause you definitely don't want to go under tunnels. Uh, it's begging for a problem. You know, going through a tunnel with, uh, emergency situation going on while there might not be no trains or cars moving there will be other people looking to take advantage of those who are having to go that route so you're going to want a secondary route pre-planned to make sure you can get to where you got to go um, throwing the old tin hat on let's say it's an EMP and vehicles are dead how much further from your vehicle to your home do you have to go and you plan your kit accordingly. If you know it's going to take you two full days to hike at home, well, then you're going to want a really good pair of tennis shoes or some light hiking shoes or something with your bag. That's, you know, that's something I don't have here. I don't have any of the clothes you would need. You know, this kind of bag can be going over your shoulder if need be. Um, you could have another backpack, a light pack with just clothing in it. You know, it or you can get a bigger bag to have it all in it. <coughs> Excuse me. So you really have to take and think. If you prepare for most anything, you will be prepared for most everything. You know, obviously, there's a few items on here that are luxury items. You know, $400 knife, $50, $60 sleeping pad, $50... Um, Siltarp. Siltarps are not cheap. You know, they're nice, lightweight. They don't weigh much. They usually pack down pretty good. But they're not cheap. Uh, I was fortunate these were given to me as a gift uh, three months ago. That's the only reason I have them. If I hadn't been given them to them, I wouldn't have these. I'll be honest. But, um, you know, do you need a cutting board? Well, it depends. How far are you going to walk? How long is it going to take you? Again, go back to planning the route you will have to take 
in order to get where you're going. If you haven't planned a route, but you've got a bag, you're two steps backwards already. Plan your route first. Look at the area you've got to traverse. Make sure you got shoes for it, clothes for it. Um, maybe you don't like beef jerky. Find a food that will give you the protein you need, the energy you need. You know, that's why I have these so-called sugary drink mixes. You know, it's, it's a source of energy. I have a green tea and mango energy drink in there. So, I mean, it's just plan out what you got, where you're going, then build your bag accordingly. You know, there, so many people make the mistake of going out and building this great big huge bag, don't know where they're going to go, how to get where they're going, and have never touched the inside of their bag. They buy it, throw it in a closet, and it sits there for, for however long. And if the need ever does come to arise where they've got to use it, then they're sitting there going, shoot, I, I don't know how to use this stuff. What am I going to do now? Then they're stuck trying to learn on the fly. Not a good way to do it. No. There's a lot of books out there that will teach you stuff, but actually not doing it is worse than trying to read it because you're, you're not helping yourself. Reading a book is good. Practicing is better. Practice makes perfect, just like shooting. If you go out and the first hundred rounds you get, you're within an eight inch pie plate size of your target, that's good. Get out there 17, 18 more times and get that down to a two inch group, or at the very least a three inch group. Then find some people to go practice with you and help you clean up your shooting. Get home bags the same thing. Find a group of like-minded people, get out and practice those skills. Because if you don't practice them, they're not going to help you. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to get home bags, bug out bags, however you want to classify it. It's all being prepared for an emergency. It's the same with first aid kits, food preps. You know, all this stuff requires you to take practice what you're doing. Um, I know you don't see many videos on my channels of me practicing. They'll come. They'll just right now it's a little rough. It's getting kind of cold. When you're a single parent of a seven-year-old, going on eight. Um, makes things a little more difficult, especially when he has learning issues. So sometimes trying to film something and have to deal with him at the same time is a little rough. But we manage. But again, here's I'm rambling, so I'll stop. Here's a more advanced kit and just a little teeny bag. It's the same size bag as the last one, and there's more stuff in it, more expensive stuff, obviously. But I can actually do more with what I've got here than what I could do with the other bag. Um, I can actually, with these and some cordage, I can build an elaborate, elaborate sleep system if I need to. So think about your food. Think about your route. Plan accordingly. Make sure you have good shoes. And if you know you've got to walk near a swampy area, put a couple extra Walmart bags in there to put over your feet, between your feet and your shoes. Keep your feet dry. Your feet may sweat, but it's a lot better than getting swamp water on them. A swamp toe doesn't feel good. Ask anybody who's played in the Army Infantry Division. Swamp toe is no fun. So, all right, I'm going to let this go. It's getting close to 20 minutes long. And I've rambled on long enough, taken up enough of your time. If you stayed this long, thank you very much. Again, go hit up the PrepRx store. Go get you some swag. And uh, catch you all later. Thanks for visiting. Grumpy old man out.